Hey everybody, it's Kara Crossway Brindle and who do I have Liliana, with me? Liliana Valen. <laughs> you all are familiar with Liliana's face because I love having her as a colleague and good friend of mine on the channel. So we got a request from our community recently about talking about dual roles. What the heck are they? What are examples of them? What are the consequences of dual roles that we can't control? So I'll start by saying some dual roles we cannot control. Let's just go there first. If you have a supervisor that's kind of a one-stop shop of a group practice, or you have a really small rural community, you can't always mitigate the dual roles. So now that we've thrown it out there, there are absolutely other examples that we can. So Liliana, when you think dual roles, how do you describe this to your supervisees or to the community at large? Yeah, I, I, I've asked them, like, when you are going to see someone as with supervisees, when you're going to see someone and you are not sure your gut is telling you, like, how am I going to interact outside? How, what if we have a conflict? Um, what if you disagree with me? Is that going to hinder our personal relationship or our professional relationship? And if the answer is yes, that's a no, that's a pass. Mm -hmm. And and how are we going to have these conversations with them? So um Having a, uh, you are the therapist and having a friend who wants you to see their child for therapy. That's a conflict of interest. That's a dual relationship. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you were friends first and then they happen to have a child that, of course, they trust you. You're their friend. But that's why this is so sticky. So the example that we talked about offline that happens quite often is when you're a therapist that works with children and you also have a child of your own. And someone at your child's school is like, oh my gosh, you're a therapist, give me your card. And then you're like, how do I navigate that? So what are your, what are your thoughts? <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, it's not easy, right? So I, um, as an MFT, I have lots and lots of rules. And every uh, credential will have different rules. Mm -hmm. But even though we are system therapists, um, we have to navigate actually seeing multiple family members within the family. So then in my case, it will be uh, seeing siblings. It will be, let me refer you out. Mm -hmm. However, talk about caveats. When there's no bilingual therapist, when they need someone who speaks Spanish, when they need someone who, right? So if you can justify having in mind, if Dora comes to and grievance me, can I justify why I'm doing this? And if you can justify it, not romantically, but if you can just like not in a fantasy, but if you can justify it, yes. Um, if you cannot justify it, please refer it out because there's lot. Dora believes that there's lots of therapists. You 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 sh you shouldn't see multiple family members. Yeah, yeah. And so obviously that could stir up some things for our viewers right now who are like, oh no, I've taken on sibling groups before. Maybe it was convenient. Maybe it's because the parents like, I want you to see them back to back. I'm here already, like knock this out. Um, I know that in community mental health, we actually were encouraged to do this sometimes, but it was mm -hmm. documented very thoroughly as to why. Yeah. Was it because there was an open abuse and neglect case? So like seeing both kids had some sort of context to the case. Was it, uh, there wasn't someone of color. And so they needed to make sure that they had a provider and this happened to be the one of the agency. Um, there are probably times and places where this is okay, but I think mm -hmm. the, the majority thought, correct me if I'm wrong, Liliana, is like refer out. Like the simple answer is refer out. Like do not create dual roles if you can help it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Especially when we're talking about clients, right? Because how the fear is, will you share something that it was shared to you that you were not supposed to share? Um, are you gonna disclose? Are you gonna hinder the like? we have to be able to think about those things when we're working with clients. Mm -hmm. So the rule out is if you cannot avoid it, how you're going to document it and then how are you going to separate so mm -hmm. that there's less um, of a chance of, of you in that. And, and, and if, but if you can refer out, there's a lot of wonderful therapists out there who you trust, who you love to work with. Mm -hmm. um, and I love care that you mentioned in their systems that we work for that um, is actually highly, for whatever reasons, highly recommended they stay within the agency. And then we see them or we refer to a colleague, but mm -hmm. there's always buts in, in our field. So let's just be aware of it, right? So if there's yeah. dual relationships, if you cannot avoid them, you have to justify why you cannot avoid them mm -hmm. and document. And if you can avoid them, refer out, listen to your intuition. Yeah. And it really speaks to having a community too, to like have that network of 
providers of like, I feel confident I've got someone for you. It's not just a no, because a lot of us have a people pleasing bone in our body of like, I don't want to say no to a potential client for lots of reasons. But if I can say no, and no, and here's a person to refer you to that I'm confident is a good fit. That feels so much better than just a straight no. Mm -hmm. Uh, Some of you watching this video will have thoughts for me about that of like, oh, your people pleasing is still showing. Yes, I know that it's still Uh, showing. I don't like to just say no. I'm going to say no. Here's a connection. Here's a resource. That's who I am. (laughs) Yeah. Um, I think to name for this video, the most common in our supervision with supervisees, the most common dual roles that I hear about are sibling groups additional family members, even extended family, where it's like, hey, my sister-in-law is going through something. Can you see her? Like, cool, please don't Mm -hmm. say yes to that. Um, But also best friends or friends or part of their community. I I mean, it doesn't have to be a BFF. It could just be like someone I know is looking for a therapist and I gave them your name. I don't know how many times I've heard this in 12 years, but it's like, cool. And I'm not going to confirm or deny I've heard from them, right? So like for folks watching this video, start to adopt a language. It can be playful. Like Liliana and I are usually pretty playful of, I can't confirm or deny that they called. Uh, Thanks for the referral. Mm -hmm. You know, I can't say anything about if I'm working with so-and-so. That person Mm -hmm. can go back to the other person and say, yeah, I'm connected to Kara or Liliana or whoever. Like that's never going to come out of my mouth. And so I think this is something to practice now. So if it does happen and you didn't even know they were connected, sometimes you don't, then it's just easy to say, I can't confirm or deny thanks for your trust in me, you know, referrals are great, but like, I'm not going to tell you anything. <laughs> what are your thoughts? <laughs> well, I completely agree. Um, the one that I see the most because I supervise um, therapists who work with couples is that they go from individual to couples or couples to individual. And I always think about all the what ifs. Um, have you thought this through, right? Um and how we cannot be switching. Um, again, MFTs have very, very rigid rules. So if we go with one, we cannot go to the next one. We have to get letters. We have to get all these things if we do. And then if we do, we can never switch back. So there's like so many rules in regards to dual roles. And there's a reason for it. Um, so <laughs> that's the most common that question that I get when it was with supervisees. Like, can I do this? So what yeah. do you think? What are the yeah. risks? Right. If you see a child and then the mother wants to come and see you, like I understand the convenience. I was just thinking about that. (laughs) I understand the convenience, but the answer will be, what do you think? Um, How can you justify this? Um, Mm -hmm. And then what about um, uh, report with the client? So if you build them with one, is the other one going to be resentful? Like there's so many things that come into play Mm -hmm. when we're working with systems. Yeah. And so that segues us nicely to like, what do we say to a client or someone who's inquiring about this that could set up a dual role? Usually they have no idea that this is something we have to be concerned about. In their mind, it's just flattering. I love you as a therapist. Of course, I refer you to all my friends, but like, we're not going to be like, send them my way. Um, so there's probably some language around there's a conflict of interest, or I can't confirm or deny that that person reached out, or when you're talking about curiosity with supervisees, like play it through what could happen if mom goes through a divorce and you've been seeing mom and you've been seeing child. And so now it looks like you're biased because mom and dad are fighting or two partners are fighting. So like that as supervision, I think is the most important part is like, play it through, be curious. If you said yes, how would this look three months, six months, a year from now? If you say no, what does that mean? I'd like to have referrals. Is that your homework is to find better referrals if nothing came to mind? <laughs> what would you add? Uh, yes, uh, to all of it, right? And and then just practice. Anytime that someone comes and tells me, can you say, it was like, thank you for thinking highly of me. And I can. As an MFT, I just cannot see multiple family members because I will not be able to justify this. However, I have these amazing colleagues that I will be more than happy to give you so that you can call and see if they're a good fit for you. I have practiced this so much that that's automatically what I say. Mm-hmm. And I have said it over and over again. Thank you. Yeah. Right. Like, thank you for thinking of me highly. And. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it came out so genuine, right. Of like, it's not like we're like shutting them down or being rude. It's just like, thank you. And it's not going to be an option. We don't have to over explain it. 
So for someone who was talking to us about this offline, it was like, well, how do I explain that there's a conflict of interest? And I'm like, you don't, you just name, there's a conflict of interest. You don't have to say, hey, our children go to the same school or, hey, I've done couples counseling with you before, but our friends, our children are now best friends. Like we couldn't have predicted that our, they would go to the same school and become BFFs. Like, I mean, these are true stories of what's happening in our community. As you were tough. Yeah. As you were talking, like you and I are now presenters. I just remember I, I have a, a same as Kara, like I'm becoming the therapist of therapists. So I do trainings, right? So I remember I was helping in this training and one of my clients who's a therapist was taking this training and I had to go help. And I was like, well, there's a conflict of interest. I can. And the other therapist was like, but what is it? And I was like, it's a conflict of interest. I can. Can you take them? Right. So you don't even in those scenarios, you do not have to explain, um, but you do have to stay your ground of there's a conflict of interest. Yeah. That's very simple. Yeah, you don't have to explain it. I mean, thank you for sharing that. Even with colleagues, sometimes they forget that we don't have to peel this back <laughs> and over explain like to even say, I work with someone individually in this group that's happening. Like that's, that's violation of confidentiality. So like it's not happening. Um, so yeah, lots of thoughts, lots of ideas here of like, please refer out when you can identify the dual roles ahead of time, depending on the population you serve. If you are mm-hmm. a person who has children in school and you work in the same area as where you live, it's probably going to happen more often than you realize that you're going to have some sort of degree of separation, but people are coming into your space. This might actually be an argument to work somewhere outside of your home space if it's possible, because you don't want to serve clients that go to your kid's school ideally. <laughs> the reality is that you don't, that was like very clear to me. My children are now young adults, but I always, when they were asked me like, can you do this? I was like, I can, I can, as long as my mm-hmm. child comes here, I can. Um, you know, when you go for services, if you go to the chiropractor, if you go to a massage, if you go to, and your client is providing those services, it was like, thank you. And I need someone else. Um, I don't want my client to see me in any of those formats. Um, Mm -hmm. so start thinking of, do you have to drive? Do you have to like how you feel comfortable, um, pivoting, um, advocating for something different. You work really hard, really hard for your license. You went to school. There were so many homework assignments that you hated. (laughs) There's the test that you have to prepare for. There's all the supervision, either that you give time or pay money for it. Why will you risk it? Mm. yeah why well, risk it absolutely and I think it goes to, without saying because you, you brought this up well on like now we serve therapists so we have lots more overlap lots more of this to navigate or we're like I might be working with someone one-on-one in consultation or therapy of some sort financial or individual therapy and now they want to attend a training or a retreat or something that we're doing because they trust us yeah. but that's their choice right like they have a knowing that there's a dual relationship they also know, I think I can speak for you on this, um, but we're not going to be like, oh, hey, how have you been since I last saw you in session? Like, we're not going to even bring up the other mm-hmm. ways that we know them, um, especially if it's like a group setting or a presentation or something. So I know that that is even more tricky because our community for how big it is, is super small. You all have heard mm-hmm. me say this on videos before. It continues to reinforce that's true because now it's like, here's this thing I'm doing. Here's the thing you're doing. Here's a training. Here's a presentation. And our people want to come in and that's fine. I'm happy to have you there. I also want to reiterate, we're not going to say anything about it. <laughs> it's like, Sup? And then you keep moving. Yeah. yeah. Like acknowledge. I'm not going to be weird about it, but I'm also not going to like ch- chat you up kind of thing. Um, so yeah, so lots to think about in this video. Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Biggest takeaways, play out the tape, see what's going to happen. If you say yes, what could be the possible consequence? If you say no, what are your referrals? Um, can you practice the language of that there's a conflict of interest and just let it land and be like, I don't have to explain it any more than that, but here's a referral. <laughs> any final thoughts from you, Liliana, on this topic? Even like practice is a conflict, of, try it with your family members. There's a conflict of interest. Like it becomes so easy when you start using that yeah. uh, vocabulary that when you have to use it, it will just come out. So be playful, be curious, wonder out loud. If you feel like you're not seeing something, consult with someone, help me wondering out loud so that you can see the map zooming out so that if you take a dual relationship, you are aware of the consequences and you can justify it. Um, But it's just better to refer it out. 
Yeah, that's the simple answer to this video. If you watched it all the way through, there's the nugget at the end. Just refer out. Well, Liana, thank you so much for having this conversation with me. It's always a pleasure to talk about this from a playful, but also like this is important <laughs> place. Um, for our folks who are watching, comment below. Let us know your thoughts on how this is navigated. What's worked well for you with dual relationships or conflicts of interest? We'd love to see it in the chat below. Otherwise, we'll see you next time. See you then.